This year, the Five Bytes podcast featured some really great scripts, tricks, and tips from the community. When I decided to add this segment to the podcast on episode one, I was worried that I wouldn't be able to find something to feature each week. And it's actually been the opposite. I've had the problem of it being very difficult to pick just one to feature. With that said, here are some of the highlights from the last year of podcasts for this segment. First up, I came across this really nifty WPF toast notification for PowerShell, and I've started to include it in a lot of my own PowerShell scripts. It's really useful. If you've got a PowerShell script that takes a long time to run and you don't want to have to like watch over it or read through some verbose logging to see when it's uh, completed and if it completed successfully, you can put this toast notification into your script. It will pop up in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. It looks pretty cool. You can then have it like linked underneath that. So if you click on it, that then brings you to the log and you can see that everything completed successfully. I also would Next up is the excellent EUC monitoring tool by Dave Brett, who also had some help from others in the community. I was fortunate enough to implement this in my current work environment, and it has saved me so much time. I no longer have to spend you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes in Citrix Studio every morning just to figure out if everything's working all right. This gives me that high level view, uh, much better than Citrix Director, I find that if there is a problem with the delivery controllers, Citrix Director does not get its data to really tell me that there is a problem or how many people are really connected into the VDAs. Whereas I found when that did happen to me and I did have problems and I had the EUC monitoring platform, I was actually able to see how many users were still connected and figure out what the damage was. So if you run Citrix in your environment, definitely check this out. AppV Scheduler version 2.6 launched this year. Now there is a community version of this tool that you can run for free. I am running the enterprise version where I work currently. I've used it over a few years in the past, but I have to say this is my first production implementation of AppV Scheduler. And from now on, if I do get another opportunity to set up AppV or to work with AppV in an enterprise, I'm just flat out going to say the only way I take this job is if you allow me to work with AppV Scheduler for this. You need to buy it. It's the only way really to properly manage AppV real time in a RDSH and VDI environment. It really is amazing. I featured a trick because it's really I didn't have any tricks to talk about through the year except for this one. There's an Easter egg feature within all the Windows operating systems called God Mode. Essentially, you just create a folder and you paste in this long SID as the folder name. And then it creates an icon or shortcut that when you open it, it's a full list of all of the administrative uh, features and menus within the operating system all kept in one place. Throughout the year, I featured a few articles from my buddy Trent Tai. So for example, he had a great article on performance impact analysis for the mitigation of Spectre and Meltdown, which was really useful. But the one I keep going back to and pointing out to other people, even in my current work environment, is the article on group policy design. He does a comparison with actual metrics on group policy design We're using monolithic versus functional and gets really into the weeds on solid group policy design. So definitely check that one out. This next one isn't really practical for everyday IT, but I thought it was a really cool use of PowerShell. There's a SpaceX PowerShell module, so you can actually run this module and run these little get commands and get real-time information from some of the SpaceX launches and various projects that are going on. I thought it was kind of cool that somebody came up with a really kind of out there use for PowerShell. The amazing Aaron Parker built and has been maintaining a really great PowerShell module for 
downloading and, inst and installing a completely automated Microsoft Visual C++ runtime redistributables. This has been really useful for for me for setting up packaging VMs. I just install all the Visual C++ redistributables, particularly for AppV, so I can turn off that feature that dynamically puts them down for applications that require it and slows down the login or sorry launch times. But I also like put it in my own home labs images too. So thanks Aaron, that has been really useful for me. I've talked about BSIF on multiple podcasts, just keeping you guys up to date on new releases with fixes and features. If you're not familiar with the tool, if you work in desktop imaging, uh, maybe in Citrix Zen app, Horizon apps, Parallels, and you're sealing images a lot, you really need to check out this tool. If you run it when you're sealing your image, it helps you to completely optimize for performance. It has built-in logic for handling things like say if you're running um, Citrix WEM, it's able to detect the service and stop that service before sealing, which is something you should do. It can do stuff like cleaning up certain registry, genericizing the image. It's really, really great. There's a really cool free tool from Avonite that you can run and it will show you how much cache and how much space on disk is being used by your browser cache settings. I was stunned by how much Chrome and Internet Explorer actually take up on my disk. And this is particularly interesting for enterprise IT if you're running non-persistent desktops and servers and you've got to manage this user cache. It's really insane. Finally, I featured numerous articles throughout the year from ICT-R on performance impact analysis on different things like launch time of MSIX versus locally installed applications or AppV applications, uh, Windows 10 performance, Server 2019, and even when applying and using available Citrix policy templates and more. They've really been churning out some great articles on performance impact analysis. Of course, I featured a lot more. There were some other highlights in there that I could get into, like the Windows 95 container, which I thought was pretty fun. Different keyboard shor shortcuts for launching into administrative features within Windows and 